Well, we got a short. I'm real loud, anyways. Yeah, we. Microphone. Oh, chick. There we go. Oh, we're good now. Candy asked me, was it yesterday? She said, you want to sing today? And I said, of course. So we tried to pick a couple of songs, and uh, we couldn't decide on a special song. Um, and I was like, you know, I was, I was searched the web, and I'm going to tell you something that might surprise you. I do not listen to Christian radio very often. And, me either. Mm, but I don't listen to radio at all, hardly. Um, I'm never in my car except to go one place. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know what's new. I don't know what everybody's singing. And we've said this to each other before. A lot of the newer Christian radio is, it does nothing for me. It, the, the songs feel empty or and once in a while there's one that really gets it right. Oh, yeah. they, it's biblical. It's accurate. It's real. It's, it has something that means something. And so I said, you know, I'll just, I'll find something. But the ones that always matter the most to me, and I mean, they're all, they're good, and if you like Christian radio, listen to it, because, you know, what goes in comes out. That's right. But the ones that always matter the most are the ones about Jesus, and that's, that's really what it's all about, isn't it? The song should be about Jesus. That's, those are the ones that I find myself always coming back to, the ones I always want to sing. And so we ended up landing on a song that had already been stuck in my head, stuck in my head anyways. And I said, that's obviously what we have to do. And so you've heard it here many times before and many different people have sang it, but it's just that special. It's just that good. And it's, uh, I hope you enjoy it this morning as well. I hope it, it blesses your heart as it does mine. We're going to sing, I'd rather have Jesus. I'd rather have 
I think I'm going to need a little help before I get into the message this morning. Honey, I'm going to ask you if you come up here and pray over me sure. before we get started. I'll pray. Mm. Heavenly Father, we come to you now today, Lord, and we thank you for this day, Lord. And Lord, right now, I just want to lift my dear one up to you, my beloved. And Lord, I ask you to bless him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Give him your words, Lord Jesus, that we all might open our hearts and receive what is today you have us to hear. And we thank you for that, Heavenly Father. And we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In a little bit, we're going to be looking in 1 John chapter 3. But I got some of the craziest things that you've ever heard in your life to tell you this morning. The weirdest message I've ever preached in my life, and I'd probably get run out of any other church that I was in, but I figured we're all pretty much in the same crazy boat here so I can get away with it. But before I'm going to, before I bring this message, I want everybody in here to be totally honest with themselves and with everyone else in order for the spirit to move as he wishes in what we're going to do this morning there's got to be no pride whatsoever no thinking well I'm too good for this there should be no grudges if you have anything against anyone else in here you better get rid of it and you better get rid of it quick because we are all brothers and sisters in Christ here and we need to remember that and we need to practice that because the world is looking at us. Your positions this morning do not matter, neither does mine, with what we're going to, to do. No assumptions uh, uh, of anything, just complete and brutal openness. And that's a hard thing to do. I know it's a hard thing to do in church. But you need to do that if you're going to be open to what the Holy Spirit has to say. And you must be teachable. And you must be open to his leading. And above all, at the end of this message, do not look around and say, I'm glad so-and-so is here because this message is aimed at you. It's for everybody in here. I ask the Lord. And, and Isaac asked the Lord the other night, don't bring only those you want to hear this message here this morning. And of course, in my mind, when I'm jotting some of this down, I was thinking, well, you know, it'd be really great if so-and-so hears this, really great if this one heard. And you know what, ain't a single one of them here. <laughs> God works in really strange ways. Yes. You are here because you are the ones he had in mind Amen. for this message. And I'm grateful that his moving is that powerful. This is a day today, not next Sunday, not the Sunday after that. This is a day today for forgiveness, for healing, for deliverance, and for restoration. And if you have come in here expecting this this morning, that's what you're going to leave with. You're going to get it. There is no revival possible without restoration and forgiveness. There cannot be a revival. So all of that has to be done. But you must be brutally honest and trusting of what I'm going to tell you at this very moment. Now, I'm going to just try, and not that everybody is required to do this. Maybe you, you just don't feel led to do it. But I'm going to ask three questions. And if you fit into one of those categories as a testimony to others, you just raise your hand and wave it and you can put it back down. But has anybody in here ever been abandoned and left for others to worry about in your lifetime? All right. Amen. Thank you for that. Have any of you ever been abused when you were coming up and lived in fear most of your life? Praise God. We got honest people in here. I'm glad to hear that. Maybe you're one of these. Have you ever once felt like you did have a purpose? And a good life. And now you feel that that's kind of gone. All right. Well, I want you to understand that God has something to tell you and to teach you this morning. Now, what I'm going to tell you is so doggone bizarre coming from me, even from me. 
But it's got a, but God gave me this, and so he wants you to hear it. Nature teaches us almost everything, if you'll pay attention. It, God created nature, and he taught them what to do. And if you watch and study them, and you will see, if you watch the Canadian geese, you'll find out how to raise your kids. There are no parents ever better than two Canadian geese with their babies. I, Donna and I do studies on those and we watch them and we go and look at them. Try to abuse a bear cub when mama's watching. See what you get. That'd be the last thing you will see. Yes. <laughs> now here comes the part. God gave me, and don't please don't get up and leave. God gave me three cats over the last seven years to teach me a serious and valuable lesson about how much he loves us and wants to make something out of our lives no matter what. I know you think I've lost my mind, but please hear me out. I have three, I received three black cats that I did not look for over the last seven years and each one of them had a unique tragedy going on in their life and somehow God mellowed my heart. I used to be the worst blood Lenten killer in the woods at one time. And I, could, I, I have to ask God to forgive me if I squash a bug anymore. He's mellowed my heart out and he did that to teach me something and to teach me a lesson with these cats. Cats? Three black cats. We'll start with the first one that came along. Rocky. My boy. Right after the derecho, a few days after that, we heard a kitten about that long just crying and crying and crying under my porch. I didn't want no cats in the house. And I said, Let, let's see if his mama shows up. I, I can't do this. Two days he was still under my porch crying. That tore my nerves up, so I had to go get him. I didn't know what to do with him. He was starved, and, he, and so I called my sister who knows how to do all of that, and so we got the replacement milk from the pet store, and Donna and I would take turns getting up at all hours of the night and feeding that little devil, and, and we referred to it as the baby. Here all of our children were grown, and Donna said, it's your turn to feed the baby tonight. <laughs> the baby and he got sick and he nearly died and uh, I remember he was my he was quick to become my buddy I held him all night praying I spent a fortune on him and as a result now he's happy he's healthy and he's the most spoiled rotten animal that I've ever owned in my life if I sit down at a keyboard or open my laptop, he jumps out of nowhere, lands right on top of it and lays down and wants me to pet him. So a lot of times I will send y'all messages with S's and X's and M's and all kinds of numbers and that's not me, it's the cat, okay? But he really loves me. He, he spends every morning sitting in my lap, rubbing my face with his and we talk. He looks at me and I'll say something and he'll answer me back like he understands me. I tell him how much I love him. I really do. That's, he'll never be abandoned again because he's mine. He thinks his name is Precious Angel instead of Rocky. Have I got maudlin and sugary and sappy enough for you? He's my boy. My two sons hate it because I ride them. I'll go, that's the son I never had. <laughs> they said, you treat that cat better than you treat us. That's my baby boy. He's, he can get away with murder, and I'll let him do it. Then another one came along. A little girl who was a runt. Her name was Lucky. The furthest thing from being Lucky probably the most unlucky animal I'd ever seen. She had been abused and mistreated all her life. No one had ever picked her up. 
Nobody had ever petted her or hugged her. She never had anything to play with, very little to eat. And even it still, after all this time, it still terrifies a little, her a little to pick her up. She was a runt, she was malnourished, and had no one to care for her. She was found at a house that had been abandoned where everyone left her behind, scared, hungry, and abused. And they, they came on the Facebook messenger that they, these people knew me, and they had found it. And they said, Luck, this cat named Lucky hasn't been so lucky lately. Can you take her? And I said, I don't want another cat in the house. But I, it just melted my heart, and I said, all right. And so they got her to the vet and nursed her back to health and then when she came to my house she was so horrified because she had never been around anybody never had anything that she lived in my closet for two months she would come out late at night and sneak to the litter box and to her bowl and then run back in and I, I didn't see her for two months and she finally started coming out and once in a while she would let me feed her and let me tell you something, these kind of cats and, and people both that's been through abuse like this are the very hardest to win over. Finally, after lots of love and understanding and a lot of, uh, a lot of treats, she lets me pick her up. And this is really sappy. She sleeps on a pillow next to my head at night. She's not afraid anymore. She's not scared of being abused anymore. And that's daddy's little girl. I'm really sick, ain't I? <laughs> Got a third one. But God did all of this. Show me something now. Now, I'm going to get to the point. We have another one. A big girl. Another black one named Lena Bell. I took a walk through PetSmart one day, one Friday, because I had to pick up some cat food. And I told Donna, and I made a huge mistake. I said, I'm going to go over and look at the cat. She said, you sure you can do that? I said, oh, yeah, ain't no problem. <laughs> There she was, in a glass case, looking so pitiful, trying to maintain a semblance of dignity. The signs said that she was 10 years old, and, but she had plenty of life left. They were trying to get somebody to take her. Her owner had taken great care of Lena Bell in the past, but now she was in a nursing home. Lena was used to the best of everything. You could tell by how healthy she was. And now she had nothing. All of a sudden, everything was gone. I told the lady at PetSmart that if nobody claimed her after the weekend, then I'd come and get her. And I had to go tell Donna that. <laughs> She's really good with me about that. Because they try to run her out to bed at night. I knew wouldn't nobody ever want that cat. Ten-year-old black female cat, ain't nobody gonna want that cat. Come on, let's be realistic. Her time was past. I spent the weekend thinking about her and how pitiful life must be now. Told y'all I'm crazy. Monday I went to get her and found she had been moved to the animal shelter and lo and behold, Janine LaSalle that gave John, Le John Catlin his kidney was in charge of taking care of her. Tell me how strange can that be? She brought her to me and she said I could have her for half price but I wanted to pay full price for her because I thought she was worth it and I did. We brought her home and lo and behold, she fell in love with Donna. <laughs> Donna cannot go anywhere in the house without that cat right on her side. And if Donna goes down to the living room, she will sit in the living room and holler for her to come to bed at night. <laughs> and look angry when she doesn't come in on time. She's Donna's baby. She snuggles up next to Donna every night on her legs, on her feet, on the top of her head. Wrapped her paws around Donna's head. She waits for Donna to go to sleep and she'll do that sometimes. And I'm afraid she'll attack me if I get anywhere close to Donna. So now she's been given the good life that she once had and I think even better. 
I always sit and talk with her. She'll sit and she looks so intelligent. And I'll let her, I'll always tell her how loved she is. And I declare I believe she understands. But that's not the point. Maybe you're one of those cats. Maybe you were or are like one of those cats that we rescued. Listen carefully. God sees that you've been abandoned. Nothing got by him. He saw that. And he wants so badly to take you in and nurture you and take care of you and fuss over you. And if you give your life truly to him, not a Sunday morning thing, no, 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 really give it to him, you will never feel abandoned again. Maybe you've been abused and there's a lot of people that don't want to talk about it because it's too painful. But you've been abused in, in, in your life coming up and it scarred you and it, make you work, it made you where you don't want to trust people. You don't want to even be around people as a result of it. But God wants you to know that his son was abused too for you. Far beyond anything you've ever had to deal with. All the beatings and the strikes he endured was for you and he understands. You don't need to fear anymore. You don't need to be afraid anymore. You don't need to be embarrassed anymore. You are in the house of God. You are among brothers and sisters that have been through what you've gone through and maybe even worse. And you need not be afraid to share that and testify as to what God has done for you. Or you do not need to be afraid to come for deliverance and to come for healing. You don't need to be afraid of that. Because that is what is waiting for you if you will let him do it. Maybe you feel like you've been put on a shelf. God knows you feel that way. There's not a thought that goes through your heart that he does not know. He wants to give you a brand new start no matter how old you are, no matter how young you are. God has a place for you. He has something for you to do. You are still useful to him. But you've got to open your heart and put away your past hurts and put away your pride and be willing to do what the Holy Spirit tells you to do. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 3, listen to this. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. That we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knows us not because it knew him not. They may not know you. They may not care about you. But God does. Amen. Beloved now are we the sons of God. That's for the ladies too. The daughters. Beloved now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. What a promise. You might not have a lot on this earth right here. But God wants to take what you do have and turn it into something special. But here's what's keeping it from happening. You've got to be delivered. And deliverance sounds scary. It sounds ominous. But it's what God wants to do with your life. Let's praise the Lord this morning.
God of my salvation be exalted. 